This is a really early variation of that. Oh, oh my. Ben, that's so real bad. teeth. That's real <laughs> teeth in plaster. Everything you own is like someone's <laughs> like fever nightmare dream. Welcome to Show and Tell. Uh, I'm Dylan Thuris, the co-founder of Alex Obscura. And we started this series because of this strange moment we are all in. This moment where we're all stuck at home with not necessarily a ton to do, uh, surrounded by our stuff. And we figured that this might be the perfect time to get in touch with all the interesting, unusual, wonderful people we know and have them show us and tell us about some of their incredible things. So today, we are gonna be talking with uh, Steve Ehrenberg, who is a little bit of a mystery to me. He's also known as Radio Guy, that's mostly how I think of him. And he is a collector of antiques and masks and helmets and all kinds of the most strange and wondrous objects that you can really uh, think of. So without further ado, Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. We wanted to start by having you show me something and then I'm gonna try and not tell me what it is. And then I'm gonna try and see if I can guess what I think it is or what it was for. Or... Well, I took a few things just uh, right. and brought them down. We have a balcony with about 100, 150 things on it. Let's see, I'm gonna bring it, let me just get it. Okay, I saw that it was being worn as a, sort of, it was set up as like a hat. What are those like? Uh, yeah, well, that, well, that's cheating. You weren't supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help me that much, frankly. It's not, that hasn't given me a lot of clues. Uh, you, don't eat, you don't eat breakfast cereal with it. <laughs> it's a hat with spoons. Did it have a functional purpose? Yes, it's actually, I'm gonna put it on. Okay, uh, don't, don't tell me. Yeah, maybe having seen you with it on. Right. I, I don't have any hair to mess up, so. I still want to make a guess. Okay, this was a hat sizer. This was used oh. by someone that made a hat, and it would take the shape of the head and transfer it above so you can. I was never going to get there, Steve. I was like, I was thinking like some kind of strange medical device, like an electric kind of. Well, uh, in, in a way, it is a medical device. And back in the 1800s, everything was a baldness cure. <laughs> or a quack medical device. But also, if you wore a tight hat, uh, it would stop the blood flow. They thought it would stop the blood flow, and you would start losing your hair. So uh, an ill-fitting hat caused baldness. I have one more treatment to go in. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> You'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what, that's what we have. Where did that, how did you end up with that? I was hunting for them. I, saw, I, I was in Paris, and I found one called a conformator. That's the that's what it's called because it conforms to the head. So I kind of gave an intro uh, of you, but can you give me an intro of yourself? Can you say who you are and what you do and kind of describe? Well, I, I, I started in architecture. Uh, my first job was in the architecture department of the Raymond Lowy Studios. And okay. if you don't know who Raymond Lowy is, he designed the car, the Avante. Famous Studebaker it, designer, one of the right. most famous. And, and everything else. I was going to be an architect. Uh, I was still going to school when I started working there. And I, I really got into the package design and graphics end of Raymond Lowy. And eventually I was a partner in an advertising agency on Madison Avenue. And uh, retired from advertising. And we opened up an antique shop in uh, Peekskill, New York. And now I have the ability to just hunt, which is more fun than even owning. That's so cool. Uh, well, okay, so let's get into some of these objects. This is one of the oldest pieces that I have, and one of the most interesting. This was found in Prague, and it's... Are they kaleidoscope like a, For collectors, it's, it, it would go on the head. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great look, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. And it, it's not set up to fit me, so I'd have to hold it, but... Uh, this was for a collector's cabinet, and it's basically um, a prism. Uh, it, it's a it's a glass prism. So you you look at the world and you turn it, and it, yeah. from the inside out, it looks just as strange as it does from the outside in. Uh, 
but it's, uh, this is late 1700s. Someone should start making those again. Those feel like, like fun party glasses. You right. know? The, the crystal, the cut crystal eyes. And they look great when you photograph somebody with it. They, you see all their eyes. You see like, like a half a dozen eyes going around. If you had to kind of say what it was about an object that draws you, how would you describe that? Uh, when I first got married, I asked my wife, I can collect anything. What do you like? And she's always liked African art. So we started collecting African masks. We had a small apartment, couldn't do floor standing pieces. But what happened was I started collecting radios, industrial stuff, and then I combined the two. I put together the African art, in my, not realizing it, but the personality of an African mask with industry. And I really ended up with a collectible that's, I think of as industry's tribal art. Let's, let's look at one of them. So. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera a little bit. Cool. So you have, you take a look at this piece. And does that sort of have a feeling of Star Wars? One, that is exactly what I was going to say. It's, it's the three CPO or C oh, three CPO. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 totally. Absolutely. And, then, and there's this piece. And that's Darth it? Vader. These are such ominous objects. They're just, they have a real intense power, like a real kind of uh, intensity to them. Are those firefighters masks? What they are. are, they are. The, 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 uh, the br this one's brass. Okay. And that one is French. And the okay. other one is German. The, okay. The, now, I mean, can you imagine going into a smoky building uh, wearing something like that, uh, this this would go to uh, there'd be a, a hose that would come off of uh, the pipe, and then go to a bellows. So everyone worked as a team. So you had someone working the bellows and someone wearing the mask and going in as far as they could, as far as the the hose would allow them. Can you bring the germ the Darth Vader one back up sure. close again? I would just love to look at look at it again. I mean, it has a nose, has an eye, has a mouth. Oh my God, I think I would leap out of my window, I even in a fire, if someone was trying to rescue me in that thing. If I someone was trying to save me, I might run toward the fire. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Do you think your wife ever re regrets starting this with you? Do you think she's she ever- She really didn't know it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> it created it a monster. Very it happened very slowly. I got a couple of things that I wanna show you. And okay. Think about them. Give me two seconds, I'm gonna run to my house, I'll be right back. Okay. Right, the thing that I think is actually more for your collection uh, is this, which you, you probably have seen things like this before. Oh, yeah. So I do have those in my collection. Dental, a dental model. I have full dental. They're called dental phantoms. Is that, is that, the, I didn't know that. Is there a, is there a hole, a, a, a clamp in the, uh, in the back, like a yep. pipe can go through? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that was used... Uh, along with a head or a half of a head. So you'd have the half a head and then you'd have the, the teeth underneath that, that you have there. And that would go on the pipe. Would you want to go to a dental school and have a student work on your teeth? No. So this is what they would practice on. Give me a second. Let me get something. Okay. It's sweet. <laughs> okay. This is a really early variation of that. Oh, oh my God. That and that's so real teeth, that's everything. real teeth in plaster. Everything you own is like someone's like fever nightmare dream. Everything you have is like someone's like wakes up panting, sweating. These are like all HR Geiger objects in your house. And I'm I don't, I don't dream you're, about this stuff, no. I'm, 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 I'm amazed that you're as well adjusted as you are. So let me ask you this. You have this collection of truly incredible but many nightmarish objects, which I appreciate. And this is actually one of my favorite things in my collection. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to have the, the background on it. Is there anything, you know, do you have nightmares about anything? If not, if not this jaw of, of doom? Yeah, I'm, yeah I, I think I do. I, I think it's being left in the middle of a mall without my clothes or my pants. I think it's something like that. <laughs> well, you can, you can supply the nightmares for other people and then you can, you know, someone so, else. You know, I, most of them look at them, they go, oh, that's grotesque. It's horrible. But 
when you there's nothing evil, there's nothing uh, sinister about any of these things. Yeah. They were tools. Yeah, they were tools used uh, by uh, doctors or or optometrists or uh, dentists that were to be. And, and, and they're, uh, they're beautiful, or, and they clearly have a power to them. I or mean, they, they were life saving devices. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but we look at them because they have personality. We project that personality on them, and they they could look monsters. The craziest thing about all of this is that even though I think you've met my co-founder Josh, I've never been to your shop. I I, I live close to you. I live in upstate New York. I live in uh, Rosendale near New Paltz. Nothing wrong with you. I don't know what I've been doing with my time. I mean, I knew it was, it just, oh man, I gotta come by. I gotta check this, I gotta well, go. With two, we're, with two floors uh, yeah. of showroom. And then there's a, a shop where there's four of us working. And uh, I mean, 50% of it is antique lighting, but the showroom is 50-50. It's, it's all the lighting, but all the crazy stuff. We have uh, mannequins from the 1800s, paper mache, Dr. Azu mannequins and one of the biggest ones and probably the the most important thing i have in the collection is a life-size horse i mean a full-size paper mache horse with 500 pieces in it uh from uh the 1870s <laughs> well thanks for sharing with us what's what's in your head and okay. uh, and yeah i'll come by the shop and i'll say hello if first. you need anything else let me know and i'll fill it in for you so beautiful Okay, bye now. Thank you so much for watching the show, part of our Wonder From Home project. And let us know who you think we should talk to next. If you think that's you, please let us know in the comments and tell us uh, the kinds of things you wanna share and show and tell about. And finally, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.